Facebook. It would be nice if we could get Instagram in there as well. Yeah, we could. There's a certain thing I gotta do. We're live already? You should be. It's just gonna share. Hey guys, welcome back to Predatory Fins. We're actually not at Predatory Fins. We are at Polo Mr. Reef. Polo Reef South here. Thank you for having us. Pleasure. This is insane. Thank you so I, much. I would trade Fage Eye for this tank. Really? All right, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it. I tell people I would trade. I would smash it all to have her my entire life. She's 11 years old and Phoebe over there. Uh, and, and I get, I'm already thinking about life without her. Yep. And I, I don't think I can deal with it. That's one of the That's reasons why friend. I don't want to have dogs anymore because of that. Because when you do lose them, it's, it's a big, it's it's a big hit. I know. Yeah. But this is beautiful. Uh, how many years in the making is this? So we bought the house in uh, 2013. Uh, and I would say construction on this thing started on, in 2014. Um, really, uh, the, the sub-basement and the quarantine room and the area in the back, and they brought this thing in here uh, on a slab of uh, four-foot concrete um, and uh, rebar, and it sat there for two, three years while the rest of the house was getting construction and plumbing. So we didn't, first of all, we didn't get real water in here until 19, 2019. We had a few leaks in between. Uh, and the first fish, I, I threw a uh, high school reunion at 35th, mm -hmm. did it here. And we had signs, you know, welcome Hewlett High School class of whatever. That was November 1, 2019. And that was day one. Day one of these That fish. was day one. And the coral, here we go behind us, they're feeding some nori now. Oh, wow, look at that. You guys get to see a live feeding. So that's a tube with algae? Yeah, it's, a, it's just a, a seaweed. Uh, yeah, seaweed, yeah. And there'll be another one coming right down here. We have two stations. So this, uh, is, this is super cool, but so they dropped this entire tank at once, or they glued it came the on, No, it actually came on a truck with the three panels uh, bonded, uh -huh. and the floor in the back are not. So they glue the floor in the back they here. Do the, they do that here with all the silicone and all that stuff. And then we started to rockscape it. Um, and then we kept the Reynolds paper on it for a long time, not to disturb it, you know? And all the equipment rooms were being built and the quarantine rooms and all that stuff. Um, we sort of didn't start, believe it or not, COVID hit like right after that. And so we were collecting fish, um, not focusing on coral for a right. while. I knew the Hawaiian thing was, the ban was coming. So, you know, I did all of my Hawaiian collecting first. And then uh, we started coral, I would say, like late 21, early 22. So what you're looking at right now is rather young coral. This they're coral beautiful. still hasn't taken off yet. They look um, amazing, though. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah, they're doing better. In a pet store, you look at corals, they're like tiny yeah, little pieces. I know, yeah, this, To say this is young is, is I know, but, but the truth of the matter is most of this coral was sourced from breakdowns in people's tanks. Oh, yes. That's a I good had them shift shipped all around the country. Uh, some of these pieces are also from, you know, high-end places like Top Shelf Aquatics where they can't ship huge pieces, so you got to go in there with a private plane. <laughs> and get it. And, and get it. And, yeah. and fill the plane up with coolers. So a lot of that uh, went on uh, for a year, basically, we did that. To get to where we are now. Yeah, I would say yes. And now we're in the... Uh, we're in the tweaking stage now. It's still tweaking flow and waiting for uh, equipment. And we're tweaking. Um, we actually have a gas problem. I don't know if, you, if that happens in fresh water, but the next has gas from the drop. So much flow that the water's churning. So we're going to build a degas chamber. To gas it out. To gas it out. Um, we still have some supplemental lights we want to put around the tank. Uh, and then we have all these, we have new tanks coming and new projects happening. Maybe, maybe we can even get him uh, connected with a big freshwater tank. What do you guys think? 
So and I know this is a live and you have questions. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. John is right there behind the camera to help us out. But I, we also had a lot of questions. We did a whole video here. If you guys want to see that coming up. And don't forget to follow uh, Polar Reef as well because you're start, you guys are pushing your content mainly on the stuff that you have, right? Which is pretty amazing. I'm not going to lie. I walk back there. This is better than like an aquarium aquarium, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. What, what was your take Several, on several tanks um, in the back there. And there'll be several more display tanks coming, right? One, one upstairs. Uh, the pond. So talk about that. And one. then, the, and then that corner is, is once those other two are up and going, I'll address that corner. So he's basically a diehard hobbyist like everyone else at home, but just at a whole other level, right? We tried to squeeze as many tanks into our house as possible. Like for me, when I'm starting out, my whole garage was tanks. My my inside my house was tanks, and he's doing the same thing to his house, but at the level that mm -hmm. satisfies him. Did you always, were you always into fish or you got into fish? Like no, I was, I, since I, no, as a kid, I no, loved No, I was riding my bicycle with baskets of kissing garamis <laughs> on, on, on parkways when I was eight. Yeah. Like I, I should not have been driving, uh, riding a bike on, on these streets. I think when you're, when you're in the hobby, either you're born crazy like yeah. us. Yeah. Or, you know, some people through the years end up falling in love with the animal or with, you know, corals, which are also animal. But it's 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 a love that it's different to to me. Some people like oh dogs and fish for me, and it I, seems to you is about the same thing. I would I I those are my favorite weekends. Now there are weekends we have a lake house where where we escape from this madness, and I say this madness because it takes a a team of you know seven plus people to manage this tank. Uh, they're not all full time. Uh, at the same time, but we have vendors coming in and things coming in and th the noise factor, um, it's like the dogs, bar yeah, yeah. And so I like to leave on the weekends and go to Connecticut and take my pups with me and spend time, believe it or not, on a freshwater lake. <laughs> yeah, I go bass going. fishing and, and, and take the dogs on the boat, and, and it's my way of getting away from this madness, at least in the summer. But you have to admit, if this wasn't in your life, your life would not feel the same, right? Yeah, and I, but I, you know, what's interesting is I get the question a lot, would you ever do this again? And the answer is, in your 40s, you would do it again. Once you're in your 50s, when you look back at what you had to do to, to, to get to this point, mm -hmm. and now you're thinking about, you know, like your, your mortality. What, do you, do you want to die in New York with all these estate taxes? Do you, do you ever <laughs> want to have a Florida house, vacation house? Right. How would you do that um, and still maintain this? And so I think those questions come up more now in your 50s than in your 40s. But you just have to make sure you have enough money in the 40s to do this. But you have the advantage. Over <laughs> <laughs> so you have a whole staff that can take care of it for you. So you can get away months at a time if you really, really wanted to. Yeah. You know, like, um, I'm not sure my, my big hairy dogs are going to like Florida too much. Right. In, in the heat. <laughs> um, I'm not sure I will. But it, it is a healthier life. Uh, my wife talks about a lot of our friends have moved down there. The truth of the matter is, for tax savings, you got to be there seven months. Like, you got to do the seven months. You got to do your time. Yeah. Can I be without this thing for seven months? I don't, I don't know. No. I don't think so. You'll start no. building mini projects over there. And well, but even... There's no basements in Florida, though. No. That's, that's the problem. You, gotta you, gotta you gotta can't dig. do it. You can't do it. You can't even put a mini one of these in, in, in a house. But a just, separate house. Separate house. Separate house. Separate building. To the, to the left or right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And go and go lengthwise. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Let me ask, what's your rarest fish? Or at least one. There are several fish in here that are <coughs> in the thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar range. Uh, and I mean, I don't know if I can point. This one right here is very rare, but he was rarer a year or two ago. His colors have morphed back to more traditional. Uh, these Hawaii angels right here, black and white, 
banded angels. Guys, every second you look at it, a new fish pops up. Like, I've been here pretty much the whole day, and every time I walk by the tank, I see a new fish. I'm like, oh, I didn't see that before. Yeah. It's amazing. But the truth, the truth of the matter is I love all of them. I love the Anthias. I, love, I, I, I just want to make it look as real as possible to, to a, a regular reef. He does. Yeah. Something that was really interesting coming from like me that doesn't know too much about freshwater stuff is you mentioned how sometimes you need to dive to get some of these saltwater fish. Oh, yeah. It's not something I've ever even thought about. Oh, yeah. So that the and river. then usually, I, and then somewhere on the phone call, I usually, uh, oh, you're going on an expedition? Are you interested? Yeah. Would you, would you, would you help us finance it? I'm like, click. <laughs> <laughs> I just want the fish. <laughs> right. I'm not interested in dealing with the, with the Cook Island government. <laughs> so um, you did say some of the fish here, people that dove end up dying to catch them. Maybe not the ones here, but that's what happens because they're, they're so deep. Yes. Is it accidents? Or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's two fish here, which I believe are the only two of its kind ever uh, in a... In, right now at least in existence, these narcosis angels, they're 500 feet deep and they're called narcosis angels for a reason. Narcosis is, is when you get, when you get the bends essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, yeah, it's, and that's why the price of these fish are, are through, the roof. through the roof because it, there aren't that many brave souls out there that, yeah. and then, and then to, to get them back up, you have to go. Say, it's seven hours on the way back up to, and you have to sleep on the wire. It's apparently not fun. So they have to bring it up very slowly. They bring it up slowly, fish. although although that even that technology has improved. They have um, chambers now. Okay. Pressure, how you know chambers. So they keep it pressurized. Yeah. Up and then uh, yeah. acclimate it up. And on. still keep them in the pressure chambers yes. for a few weeks. Andrew, right. somebody's asking, what's the feeding cost per day? If you don't mind answering. Feeding cost per day. I, someone just asked me that. I, I, we, we feed about um, five pounds of frozen food a day, of flat packs, five pounds. So I don't know how much of, of and we make our own, and sometimes we buy it from the store. So how much is five pounds of frozen right. food? Because I get our bills. I get our bills in total supplies. I, I, there's no breakdown between food and testing reagents and stuff like that. So this, this is a good one. And Electricity costs. To run I mean, this tank. What is it built to run this tank? I have a number for you, but does it include the social media aspects of this tank or just operating? Just operating. operating. Does it include get, buying, new, <laughs> does it include buying new corals and specimens or just operating? Operating. Just operating. Are we including staff or just like electrical like to, and... If I labor? wanted to have... Like labor? Everything. Yeah, does it everything, include labor? Yeah, it does. In labor expenses. What would it cost a month to run this tank? Probably up to 60 grand a month now. <laughs> so so you better subscribe to their channel if you want to keep seeing things like this because that's the only time... And it's really, that's a low number because we buy coral and do capital projects yeah. all the time. So the bleed is actually more than that. Right. That's sort of like bare bone <coughs> base. Base. And, and it's going to go up because we have more tanks coming. Right. Right. Well, we're, we're here today, guys, trying to see if we can convince him to set up his giant monster freshwater tank because he's he known for the salt water. I had a Lucanani once, I told you. Yeah, Lucanani. <laughs> yeah. But an Arapaima would look good in this house, no? Yeah. <laughs> you have any more questions? Or? Uh, a bunch. This to me, what's the, the cheapest fish in the tank? Probably like a, 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 a like a twelve or fifteen dollar cleaner ass or something like that. Like to me, they're all just as beautiful. It's function, right? The the, the fish serve a certain fu function. So it's not really like the price value. He just likes all types of fish. Obviously, this super rare one that you're like, oh, I'll have to get that. They will find it here. So I think Whip's World heard Andrew wrong. It wasn't sixteen. It was sixty. Sixty thousand a month. A month, yeah, yes. A month. Yeah, the electricity, the, the electricity alone is is fifteen. Fifteen, yeah. That's more than a warehouse. Yeah, we're about like two grand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna plug their YouTube channel in the comments. So yes, if you please. Say, go follow. Go follow. 
follow. So yeah, guys, please go follow Paula Reef. Uh, they also want to come. And we to spend the shop. a lot of money in country critters too. Country critter. We we did a plug you for guys. you guys. John, come here. Sit over here, John. Come on, John. I just want to comment on your two grand a month. Uh, God bless you. Yeah. Uh, the, closer to his. Whoa, well, but we're, we're not even. All up and running. Yeah, we're only yeah, in the back. Okay, yeah. So John, uh, is he on the camera? Can you see him or no, John? No. Yeah, let's get closer. Actually, John, we have to go that way. I can zoom it out a little bit. So, guys, you've seen John from Country Creators. I got the zebra shark there. Um, thank you, by the way, for that. He's doing great. Excellent. We got. I have one, only one. I have the one that I've had for years, right. and I have another one that I got. Got him. Let's see, he's thinking about it. He's starting yeah. to think about <laughs> it. <Get the edge. laughs> so, go ahead, John. Do you have any shrimp or snails in here? In yeah. Uh, yes, but the main thing that we think does the best job, stays alive, etc., are the sea urchins. Sea urchins. Sea urchins. There's probably a thousand John. sea urchins in there. So this is John as well. John at Front Country Creators actually helped build this tank. Yeah. What was the what was the like the biggest, the hardest thing to do here? It had never stopped. <laughs> yeah, going. it just it's still going. Sorry. Every time there is just a a new challenge. So nothing's stunned small and nothing's easy. So you know. It's like turning the Titanic. Doesn't matter what it yeah, is. Yeah, it's a Titanic yeah. fish yeah. tank. Yeah. yeah, you can't you can't turn it fast. No. And, and you want to build something, it, it's it's like if you want to add something to your tank, maybe it's one square foot. Here it's twenty square feet. <laughs> Right. So, so it's at a different yeah, level. That's yeah, so finding the space, finding I, ways to get it into the house now it's already built. This is definitely the most insane home aquarium I've ever seen. Definitely. That's what they say. You did good, my friend. Thank you. You, you, you did good, too, because you yeah, helped. Yeah. <laughs> Any more questions? Um, do you have a cleanup crew? Yes. Do you have clams in the tank? Um, the angels and butterflies would destroy them. We have a separate clam system attached. You guys have to watch that video. You, you'll see it in the video. This we have a crazy. lot of clams back there. I love them. Just uh, not in this tank. This is actually another good question because we talked about it when we were back there. Is Do you have any coral that can repopulate our seeds? And that's an interesting question. Um... The, the Florida people don't want this coral because it has to be specific to Florida. Right. And then the Caribbean people don't want this coral because it has to be specific to the Caribbean. There's nothing. So this is all Indonesian, and their reefs are nowhere near as bad as, as the other ones. So... Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll probably... Want, We'll probably try to spawn some coral here for an educational purpose, um, but I don't think I can save the reefs. I don't think I can beat Mother Nature. It's not a one-man <laughs> job. It's not yeah. a one-man job. Well, also, another thing. That I can I can help fund other people's efforts, and that's what we do. Uh, the problem is that every country has their own effort. Like right. Australia does something different than the Solomon Islands. But also, the same thing we're putting a uh, 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 fish. In the, you know, from a tank in the wild is the same thing with corals, right? They don't want a coral in a, from a tank to go back into the wild unless it's like the last resort. They would rather, no, they don't want that at all, right? So, exactly. so exactly. it becomes a problem. He, he, right. I thought the same thing. Maybe he can help, you know, take the corals and put it back in the wild. No. But same thing with fish, the same way that we can't release fish back in the wild. Right. They don't want the corals either because it could bring a bigger problem in the long run. Fish guy Jacob. Do you have any sharks or stingrays? Not here. Public's asking. Not here, but uh, soon. Yeah, we're talking to John here to uh, <laughs> get something going for him. Look, I don't know if you guys can see. Oh, no, there's, there's, a shark. Shark. there's a this shark. This is a inside. very friendly Nemo <laughs> clownfish tank. You know what I want to try, actually? I want to try and see if people can see the difference if the orange filter would work. Oh, yeah. Let's see if this works. Let's see if that works. Can you guys see? Not too much different. No? But it's not showing John. Too far away. Well, it definitely, it definitely, yeah, it's just the camera's too far away. Yeah, I just moved the camera. That's why it wasn't showing John. Can you zoom it out a little bit so that John can get in the picture? Yeah, yeah. 
So, guys, it's definitely like being here in front of this tank and seeing how thick the acrylic is and all these amazing animals and creatures. And it feels like you're in the oceans in our back. Like, it literally feels like that's what it is. Like, there's the oceans right behind us. Squeeze in this way. Yeah, yeah. Or angle the camera so that it sticks out. Like, put the camera there. Will it catch all the stuff? I did, but, but then it just takes it off the tank. Way, and you're it's, it's asking orange. me about challenges, even getting a magnet to clean four inch thick acrylic is a challenge. <laughs> and so then you usually like, get in there. The, the yes, magnet but is the your magnet, wife, right? Yes, no, but we yeah. do have a magnet, and then every now and then. What's your mistakes name? happen, <laughs> Michelle. Okay. But every now and then we do have a magnet and it does get stuck together and it actually has to be separated in a hydraulic press because it's so strong. Oh, you can lose a finger, yeah. no problem, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dangerous stuff. <laughs> yeah, John, I'll squeeze you over here. Oh, somebody said keep lens on. Uh, Robert Welsh said, it's great to hear that you're giving back to the hobby. Thank you. I mean, it's my, it's my, that's our main mission, really. The amount of time that they put into this, is, it's, this, it's amazing. This camera's been too bad for me, so I, I couldn't plug it in. Yeah, so I just hung myself. All right. Some technical difficulties, guys. Yeah. Give us a second. I couldn't tether it. Uh, Shannon Lee said, Andrew, what's with no one having purple tanks? Are they on a restricted list? No, purple tank. Purples are, purples are not from Hawaii. Purples are from the Red Sea, and they're good. They're, they're good. Still, yeah, yeah, still good. Uh, you got them in there. Yeah, 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 maybe she's saying she doesn't see any in the tank. Oh, no, they're, 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 they're in there. They're in there. You, it's hard to see because we're blocking the tank, but yeah. it's really hard to see how big this tank is. This, this is probably at least a, what, 20-foot panel? You should actually take the camera while in the live now with, with the orange thing and just move it forward and, and just... I could. Sure, yeah, show let them. them. Let them see what that, what's going on closer. I could. You want to do that now? Yeah, do it now. Yeah, yeah we can still talk. Yeah. Uh, Moto City Aquatic said, the two coolest guys in town. Well, there's four guys here. Are you trying yeah, to pick yeah. a fight with who? Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Let's see if we could do this. I'm yeah. to be able to see much. Sure yeah, they will definitely appreciate that view. Yeah, if you get swimming, you <coughs> oh yeah, that's, that's dramatically different than they saw. A hundred percent. Once that once it's right up on it, it looks amazing. Slick Easy said, "When are you doing the giveaway? It's going to be on tomorrow's live." But there's a problem. It goes down that you board. saw the problem, right? We're not at ten thousand likes, so I don't guys, know. we said ten thousand likes, and we would do a giveaway on the albino stingray. The 10,000 likes are not there. So if you still got time, if you want to go share that video, like that video, and tomorrow at our normal time, we're going to be doing that live and hopefully still be able to what give it, it away. Now? It wasn't even a 6,000. I thought it was, I saw that six. It was over six. It, it was, was over six? six yeah. Well, we, we said 10, so we have to keep to our word, and you guys got to do your part as well. You uh, wrote Klaus said, absolute beautiful, my dream tank. I think this is a lot of people's dream tank right here. <laughs> Do you ever get in it? Um, <laughs> at least put a float on there and get a suntan under the lights. Something. The last time was not so good. I fell and I cracked. And you know the castaway sound when he cracks the coral? Yeah. You know Tom Hanks? And he's yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what you... <laughs> that, that was it. <laughs> it was like two-day cleanup after that. Uh -huh. Today, on the way here, uh, John told us that you know, we're going to go in the tank, and Kevin's like... I don't want to go in there, dude. I don't want to break any of those corals. I'm not doing it. I'm going to destroy thousands of dollars of coral. No, thank you. <laughs> Do the fish ever try to breed in the tank? All the time. All the time. But they eat each other, right? Because they're... Yeah, the eggs scatter. They go, they go through the skimmers and the UV. I mean, I don't know. Do, do, do your subscribers use UV filters? Some do. I mean... The more advanced. Ours is 4,000 watts. It's yeah. like 300,000 microjoules. It kills free swimming... Ick and, and, and anything velvet, yucky, pretty much. So, you guys see the video and you see the size of that UV light, it's it probably took two or three people to carry, right? And then, then we have a three so gram plus inches in diameter. ozone, right? That ray, ooh, it'll run, run O3, it really zaps the water. Will the biofilm tan your skin? Will it what? Will it what? The biofilm. 
will like tan your skin. Yeah, you mean you mean the lights? Like oh maybe yeah yeah the lights will definitely or or or, or a bacterial vibro. What are, what are they talking about exactly? The bio. When I think of biofilm, bio that means ba bacterial. Yeah. I don't think he's asking his question right. Will the biofilm tan your skin? I think, the, I think the, maybe they're talking about the, 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 light, the, the lights from the tank definitely will, but the biofilm won't affect you because. Right. Yeah, so the lights are that strong; they'll give you a nice tan. Oh yeah. yeah I mean, it's replicating oh. the sun. That's true. I didn't think about that. And we measure with a par meter. We go in with a big meter and measure each spot, so we know, and then we map it out digitally. So we know where the corals, to place corals. There's some hot spots in the tank that are, you know, five, six hundred, and there's things that get very low light, and so we, we just place our corals accordingly. accordingly yeah. It's amazing. <coughs> we got a couple more minutes, so if you guys want to ask last questions, we'll wrap it up. Well, we did all our questions, you know, on the video, and you guys get to see that. Um, he talked a lot about, you know, if you would do it again, he would do it on the forties. But I, I just like the redundancy built in this system. You want to just give them some examples? Um, so to me, that's the most amazing part of the system. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's what okay. Me. Like yeah. this system, if you don't wake up to the alert text, like something's wrong, something's wrong, it calls you and gets you up out of bed. Like, like it literally. So. Some of the redundancies are like the main pumps. There's two running and a third that oh, oh, cycles, yeah, no. and then it monitors the flow. So if one goes down, it'll speed them up. The closed loop has a spare pump built in. If it senses no flow, it'll automatically switch to the other pump, changes the valve positions. Uh, like Andrew was saying, if the alerts don't wake you up or the internet goes down because they're uh, Wi-Fi alerts, uh, there's actually like, wake up. Cell phone <laughs> there's, 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 there's actually phone. a cell phone dialer as a backup. So that it, it if the, like if the internet robot. goes down there. Yeah, it's a PLC. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, what's the name of that PLC company again? Pro Productivity, Productivity 2000. Productivity 2000, yeah. yeah. So guys, like I said before, yeah. if you want to make sure that, you know, help him by following the channel, subscribe. He definitely helps because then he keeps him going and even be able to show other people as well yeah, something yeah, like yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, You know? So if you guys can do Please, yeah, please favor, like and subscribe. Help he, share. Even that UV... The UV is Jonathan's biggest fear in the house because <laughs> I guess he's melted a few in country critters and almost <laughs> blew the place up. So he doesn't want to blow my place, the house up. So, so there are several temperature probes that on the ballast and on, on the UV bulbs. To keep track of the temperature. To keep track and to shut automatic shutdowns. And then we got yeah. automatic shutdowns off the computer just in case Skynet decides... Not to listen. Yeah, like a... So really safety off. above safety yeah, above safety. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So would the temperature get out of control during normal operation? No. Or if like no. a pump no. fails? So if a pump fails and the flow... If a pump fails or the flow decreases, um, we'll shut the UV down. There's also internal thermostats inside the UV that if it, the water, if it gets above water temperature, it'll shut it down because it's too slow of a flow or something went wrong. It has leak sensors around it. If something starts leaking, they shut it down. Yeah. It has, then it has mechanical flow switches that aren't computerized. That just, if the panel closes, it shuts the power off. And then it has a, same with a temperature, a second temperature probe that's just a manual like switch, like yeah. not computerized. And the same goes for the ballast on the lights. <coughs> On the computer? Yeah, so that's just inside of the, the UV, yeah. inside the actual body. Also, the ballasts are monitored for temperature, too, so that they don't overheat. Look, I've been, fan I've been inside aquariums and back, you know, back behind the scenes. This is definitely top-notch. Everything you guys did here is it's impressive. It's not something that you see every day, that's no. for sure. So it's well, pretty wild factor here. Bigger tanks, bigger problems. That's what it is, right? Exactly. Or different problems, problems that you never would have in a smaller aquarium. Like this degassing issue yeah. right now. Perfect example. You would never need to degas in a, an aquarium. But when you have giant skimmers pouring thousands of gallons per minute, crashing down 50 feet of pipe, but would you say that's because maybe the protein skimmer is oversized? Is that no, it's just the it's just the sheer drop. It's more so the elevation. Okay. I mean, that, and it's only something you're gonna learn by doing it because 
they, yeah. they wouldn't know that but ahead of the time. The manufacturer, I would think, would know about this problem, right? Other zoos or aquariums that buy this product should have the same problem. They do, yeah. and and they degas. Okay. So we're, we're we're now in the degas building, and, and and before we build it, we want to know. We're in the degas engineering stage. Yeah, we're in the engineering stage. Like, yeah. how big does it have to be? How where to put a pipe? Where yes. do it? What and media goes in it? What media goes in it? how to get it down there. All right, so we're gonna wrap it up. This is a great live. Thank you so much for pleasure. having us here. Pleasure, John, thank you. Pleasure. And like you said, if you guys wanna watch that video, we're gonna have it edited and upload, uploaded pretty soon. If you have any other types of questions, feel free to ask and also make sure you like, share, subscribe to their channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Great, thank you guys.